I have been married to my husband for 14 years now. We have four children together, all girls. I used to be sad about it, but my husband has always assured me that it was okay to have only female children. I started dating my husband when I was 18 years old. This is to say I have spent over half of my years on earth loving this man. One of the policies I created for my marriage was that I will never check my husband's phone no matter what. My husband has never given me a reason to check his phone. He always comes home early and he is a very dedicated husband and father. Why create problems where there is none? Our anniversary was on the 28th of October. He was away in Abuja for a business meeting, but he promised to fly back home for the celebration that day. With the help of my girls, I was able to organize a surprise dinner party. I invited some of his close friends and even his immediate younger sister was present. It was getting late and my husband was still nowhere to be found. I tried his line severally, but it was switched off. Disappointed, the guests had to leave one by one. I cried my eyes out that day. I didn't hear from him that night. My girls and I didn't close our eyes throughout the night. That was so unlike him. Around 8.30 a.m. the next day, my phone rang. It was my father-in-law. Bisola, Andrew is admitted in St. Philip's General Hospital, Organ State. Please go there now. But he's in Abuja. I said without noticing that the line was already disconnected. Like a mad woman, I quickly put one and two together and carried my children to my parents' house who were as surprised as I was. From there, I made my way to Organ State. I got to the hospital and met my husband in a very critical condition. He was on life support. There were bruises all over his body. I thought it was an accident until the doctor told me that my husband was stabbed 15 times. I started crying. I called my in-laws who told me that they were already on their way. I held my husband's hand and I was crying. Baby, please don't leave me alone in this wicked world. I can't do this life thing without you. In the evening, my husband's parents and his, elders, his elder brother arrived from the village. It was then I got to know that my husband was brutalized by his baby mama. Apparently, my husband has a three-year-old son with another woman. They had an argument and my husband hid her. With anger, this woman called her boyfriend, who is a cultist, and they did this to him. Thanks to good neighbors who rushed him to the hospital, unfortunately, only the boyfriend was apprehended and the woman is still on the run. Tears dried up immediately from my eyes. All I felt was disgust and hate for my husband. Did you need a male child so bad that you did this to me? You told me you were okay, Andrew. You told me female children are also important. You told me to stop crying, worrying myself over having a male child. Why didn't you tell me you were not okay? I said these words with tears. I was inconsolable. My mother-in-law tried her best to pacify me. We want him to leave that woman, but he, would, he wouldn't listen, my mother-in-law said. So they were even aware of their son's affair. I felt a fresh wound in my chest. I never would have guessed my husband would do this to me. I stormed out of the hospital in anger and boarded a taxi to take me to a nearby park. My husband is reaping what he sowed and I won't be a part of it. I was still in the taxi when I remembered our marital vows for better or worse, in sickness and in hell. Till death do us part. I felt a sharp pain in my stomach. I was short of breath and couldn't even breathe. The driver had to park somewhere and made sure I was good. When I was a bit calm, I asked him to take me back to the hospital. I returned back to the hospital and tended to my wounded husband. I hated him, but I still needed to do what I have to do as his wife. The next day, his parents and his siblings traveled back to the village. I was left alone with him. My mother came the next day and stayed with me for two days before traveling back to cater for my children. I put my life on hold to stay by the side of this undeserving man. 
it wasn't easy for me at all. My husband was in coma for two weeks before he finally regained consciousness. He couldn't look me in the eyes. He couldn't speak yet, but his face showed he was ashamed of his actions. He began to get better day by day, although some of his, his injuries were looking so bad. One evening, I was dozing off by the side of his bed when my husband held my hands. My wife, I'm so sorry. I was startled. I didn't know he had already regained his voice. I didn't want to bother you. I just needed a son to bear my name. I'm sorry. That woman is far beneath you, my husband said. He was in so much pain. I just told him to stop speaking and wait till he gets better for us to settle scores. I held his hand and we were both crying. I fell asleep. That was the last time I heard from my husband. He died that night. I cried my eyes out. His family came and took his body to the village. I finally got reunited with my girls. They were asking about their father and I didn't know the answer to give them. My husband was buried two weeks after. I was in the parlor with my mom when two men came into the house. I was given a notice to quit. I was surprised. My husband built this house. Who is quitting me? Madam, this house was sold to my client last week. I would advise you to vacate this building before the due date. One of the men who is a lawyer advised. Who sold this house? I asked perplexed. I was presented with the house documents which now bear the name of the new owner. The house was sold by my late husband's baby mama, who is still on the run. My agony got tripled. This house was built by my husband and I. I contributed to the building of this house. I don't deserve this, I cried out. I decided to go to the bank to make an inquiry about my husband's finances when I got, to the, when I got the shock of my life. My husband changed his next of kin from my name to his son's name. The son, his baby mama had for him. My world has crumbled.